Congratulations, Patty. Thanks. Congratulations for what? I don't know. Hey, how about a movie tonight? There's a new horror picture at the Ritz. I'll see if I have enough money. Let me know. <laughs> Congratulations, Patty. What'd I do? Maybe you want a sweepstakes or something. Let's see what the jungle drums are saying. Hi, Patty. Oh, hi, Patty. 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 Congratulations. What are you talking about? Haven't you heard? You're up for the presidency of the Girls' League. Me? I nominated my cousin, Kathy. Kathy made it, too. How about that? You and Kathy are running against one another. Oh, no. I think it's wonderful having two presidential candidates under the same roof. Uh, but I couldn't run against Patty. The Girls' League needs someone who's popular. What they call a wheel. I withdraw. Oh, no. You'd make a better president than I would. They need someone with culture. You've lived all over Europe. You speak French. I withdraw. Well, just a minute. If you've both been accepted as nominees, neither one of you can withdraw. What's going to stop us? What do you think would happen to our whole political system if a nominee withdrew just because he liked his opponent? You see, you could undermine the whole structure of our country. Oh, I'm serious. Which one of you wins is not important. The important thing is that you get in there and try. Yeah. Beat each other's brains out. Can't <laughs> Kathy and me to fight one another, Papa? I'm not sure this is such a good idea, Martin. Well, there's nothing personal in it. Politics is a healthy form of competition. I've covered hundreds of campaigns. Everybody blows off a lot of steam, but when it's all over, there aren't any hard feelings. When you girls were accepted as candidates, you were given a responsibility to campaign to the best of your ability. Well, you owe that to your schoolmates, both of you. When do you two make your speeches? We're supposed to fire the opening guns in our U.S. history class tomorrow. If you get elected, can I get in on the graft? <laughs> Boss, doesn't the honor involved make any impression on you? Uh-uh. Only the graft. <laughs> Don't worry, Kath. I'll find an excuse not to run. I'll probably flunk in Latin anyway, and they'll disqualify me. I won't let you fail in Latin. They need a dynamo like you. I know I'd make a great president, but they could use someone with brains like you. I'd be selfish if I ran. If you were president, it would not only be good for the League, it would be good for you. What do you mean? Well, it might help to give you a sense of responsibility. Is that so? Well, there's no point in taking chances on getting someone's feelings hurt. It'd be a landslide anyway. No, it wouldn't. You'd get a lot of votes, Patty. I meant it would be a landslide for me. You? <laughs> you silly. You're not really qualified to be a president. You said so yourself. You nominated me because I need someone with culture and brains. Well, I was being unselfish, too. I nominated you because I thought if you became a little more social around the campus, you might be able to get a date for the mashed potato ball. I can get a date any time I like. There's just no one I care to go out with. I nominated you because I thought it might help you to grow up. I thought it was time you had a little more in your mind than milkshakes and Richard Harrison. Not necessarily in that order. Oh, really? All right. You just got yourself an opponent. I'm not much of a speaker. In fact, I'm not much of a politician. My esteemed opponent, Patty, is a wonderful girl. And she is a go-getter. The trouble is that when you want her to get, she's usually too busy going. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on what qualities the Girls' League wants in a president. If you're looking for someone who can do the bossa nova and the baked potato, vote for Patty. 
But if you want someone who isn't flighty, someone who will dedicate herself to the tasks at hand with intelligence and integrity, then I ask that you vote for me. Thank you. And now we'll hear from our next candidate, Patty Lane. Thank you, Kathy. Well, at least I know the difference between the mashed potato and a baked potato. <laughs> One is a dance, the other is a vegetable. <laughs> One of the most important functions of the Girls' League is to set up extracurricular activities for its members. Kathy's idea of having a ball is to play chess all night. <laughs> if you want chess and classical concerts, elect her. But if you want a program of real fun, elect me. <laughs> And now our third candidate, Susan Baxter. Vote for me. <laughs> and then she called on me, and I got up and talked. It was the first speech I had ever made. Were you nervous? Not after I started. I'll bet you were smashed. Well, I did reasonably well, I think. For someone who was only interested in chess. I didn't mean that, Kath. It was just campaign talk. You know, like, uh... Calling someone flighty. What did I tell you? Democracy in action. And if I'm elected president of the Girls' League, I pledge to fight for more student dances. We need more guest speakers. We want more freedom in our choice of clothes. I say we should be more concerned with curriculum than with clothes. Kathy's been living in Europe. Maybe she'd understand our problems better if they were in French. I have a straight-A average. What is Patty's answer to that? Who wants a grind for president? In two years, we will be going to college. Let's not elect a president who has milkshake for brains. The Girls' League should support our school sports. If Kathy is elected, we'll all be tripping over cricket wickets. <laughs> Vote for me. <laughs> Covatis, Richard. Great, Patty. Of course, it's still pretty early. You know what I think we should do? What? Set up a regular campaign headquarters. The way they do in the national elections. Crazy, Richard. With buttons and stickers and everything. Well, that's a ticket. And I know just where to set up headquarters. Good morning. Yes, again. Good evening. Don't look now, but I think World War III has just broken out. <laughs> Welcome to National Headquarters. Yeah, but Patty and Kathy share this room. They did. Kathy took one look at this and fled from the house. It's the lowest trick I've ever heard of. She's turned our bedroom into her campaign headquarters. That's pretty terrible, all right. I could kill myself. Because your cousin's such a sneak? No, because I didn't think of it first. <laughs> Come on. Where to? We're going to counterattack. Kathy, you've already helped me by letting me out of your room, Ross. You're certain you won't mind sleeping on the couch. For 50 cents a night, I'd sleep on the roof. <laughs> Are you sure Conrad Hilton started this way? The banner's up. Good. I wonder what the sneak is up to. I wonder what the sneak is up to. They've got the banner up. Never trust a relative. Gee, Patty, you practically threw her out of here. She had to go somewhere. Whose side are you on? Well, yours, only I hate to see women go to war. At least men are logical. I wish I knew what she was doing. What's the difference? It's just good strategy to know what the enemy has up her sleeve. Hi, group. Say, what do you hear from the White House? And you. You gave her your room, you traitor. That's a lie. I'm renting it to her. <laughs> Ross. Yes, Mr. President? How'd you like to be a spy? I'm too young to get shot. For a dollar? You just bought yourself a spy. <laughs> Who do I shoot? I can't get into Kathy's headquarters, but you can. Gee, I don't know, sis. All you have to do is let me know what's going on in there, what she's planning. I'll take my money in advance. Richard. Give him a dollar for me, will you? I wonder if campaign contributions are deductible. Now, I want you to get me all the information you can. I feel like Matt Harry. Is the new campaign slogan ready? And they're still working on it. What's it going to say? 
Take the right lane, Patty. How's that for a slogan? Take the right lane, Patty. That's great, Richard. By the way, where are you going to put it? In the school corridor tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. It'll be the first thing the kids see when they get to school. Hi, Kenny. What are your plans? We're going to have a rally at noon tomorrow. How many yells in rally? <laughs> tomorrow afternoon, we can put up the campaign posters. We can do it as soon as school is over. Tomorrow afternoon will be too late. <laughs> what? Nothing. Do you know what we lack? A good, effective campaign slogan. Kathy? Yes, Rod. How would you like to hire a counter spy? <laughs> Look! We've been taken. <laughs> would you please ask Kathy to pass the salt? Kathy, would you pass... Aren't you talking to her? I'd rather not discuss it. But then I'm afraid you'll have to try a salt-free diet. Would you please ask Patty to pass the bread, Uncle Martin? Well, even in national presidential campaigns, the candidates still talk to one another. But they don't call their opponents spindle-headed boars. And they don't accuse their opponents of having milkshakes for brains. They do if it's true. As for you, do you know what you are? Sure, an operator. You have to fight fire with fire. Listen, you, I've had... Time! Nothing. Now, what is this all about? Kathy is running a vicious, underhanded campaign. I can't help it if the truth hurts. The students don't want an electronic brain for president. They want a natural-born leader, like me. Now, wait a minute. Let's declare the dining room neutral territory, okay? It's too late. And it's your fault. My fault? I'm not even running. Maybe you should start. I asked you to let both of them withdraw in the beginning, King Solomon. Well, you were wrong. This is nothing but a little healthy letting off of steam. Ross, would you ask your mother to pass me the butter? <laughs> Couldn't you sleep either? No. There's too much political tension in the air. I'll fix that for you. Oh, thanks. You know, I'm sorry about that little scene at dinner tonight. We both acted like children. You know, it's really ridiculous of us to worry about the girls. They love one another. I know. Hmm. They couldn't be closer if they were sisters. I know. Well, what are we so worried about? Martin, what if Kathy's elected? What about Patty? What do you mean? Patty won't like it one bit. She's a born winner. Well, maybe it's time she had a little experience as a loser. Patty would take it very hard if she lost. So would Kathy. Oh, look, Natalie, I've covered hundreds of campaigns. This isn't a smoke-filled caucus room. These are two sensitive girls competing with each other, and they're beginning to beat each other's brains out. What do you want, mayonnaise or mustard? I'll vote for mustard. I'll take mayonnaise. I heard on tonight's grapevine that Richard's going to take a straw ballot. How'd it come out? Ross doesn't know yet. Ross, he's your grapevine? Don't laugh. I think there's a good chance Ross could come out of this election a millionaire. <laughs> Martin, what does a straw ballot mean? Well, if Richard's handling it, I don't think it means anything. How could anybody win with Richard running their campaign? I think he's a sweet boy. Well, I didn't say he wasn't. He just shouldn't be running anything. <laughs> Isn't it terrible? I don't even want to hear what the results are, period. I don't even know who to root for. Oh, we're being silly. Now, it looks like a big problem now, but in a few days we'll be laughing about all this. Are you sure? I'm positive. The election will be over, the winner and the loser will be buddies again, and all of these attacks on each other will be forgotten. You just wait and see. Here's your sandwich. I'm not hungry. Neither am I. How's it look? Shake the milkshake kid. Vote for Kathy. That's fine, Mary. Try to get them out by tonight, and we'll distribute them in all of Patty's classes tomorrow. Right, Chief. Ken, how do you like it? I'm fine. Is anything wrong? Well, Kathy, can I see you a minute? Richard took a straw ballot, so I thought we should take one. I just got the results. What were they? Well, I'm going to give it to you straight. Patty got 
You got 30%, Susan got 15%, and 5% voted for Rock Hudson. Well, I suppose that's it, then. But we're not licked yet. The reason Patty has such a big edge is because everyone knows her. Don't forget, she's been going here since she was a freshman. Well, it's too late for me to become a freshman. Ah, but it's not too late for everyone to get to know you. Oh. Huh. By challenging her to a debate. A debate? A debate helped elect a president of the United States. The Lincoln-Douglas debate in 1860. You have been away a long time. <laughs> Look, we could hold it in the big gym. The entire girls' league would get a chance to hear you. It's a marvelous idea, Ted. There's only one problem. Patty might refuse. Not Patty. She's too much of an egomaniac. <laughs> that egomaniac, challenging me to a debate. Well, we know what to say to her. Right, we say no. No. Why don't you challenge her to a game of handball? You think she can out-debate me? That's not the point. Ross sold me a copy of that straw vote that Kathy took. We're ahead. All we have to do to win is sit tight. Everybody knows you. If you debate with her, everybody will get a chance to know Kathy. That's good. That's bad. I have a feeling we better not tangle with her. I have a feeling we better. We debate. Hello. I just wanted to let you know I accept your challenge. I knew you would. I'm only doing it to give you a fighting chance. I've already won the election. If you're referring to that straw ballot of Richard's, it doesn't mean a thing. Well, I bet it would if you were winning. I suppose it would. I shouldn't have said that. You were right. What's a straw ballot anyway? Especially with Richard taking it. I wish we had never gotten involved in this, Patty. So do I. This whole thing's gotten bigger than both of us. It almost seems as though you have to be mean to win. That's politics. Well, it will all be over soon. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, this is the first friendly conversation we've had in a long time. Feels good. I know. Patty, perhaps we shouldn't go ahead with the debate. I thought you wanted it. I did. But now I think I'd feel better if we didn't go ahead with it. All right, if you're worried about it, we can call it off. I wasn't worried for me. I was thinking about you. Me? I never told you this, but I was the debating champion of Mrs. Tuttle's of Mountain Briar. Well, this isn't Mrs. Tuttle's of Mountain Briar, cousin. This is Brooklyn Heights, my territory. I was only trying to help you. But you're too pig-headed. All right, we debate. Right, we debate. <laughs> will be dancing in the corridors with a hot dog in one hand and a milkshake in the other. She'll turn Brooklyn Heights High into an amusement park. Her school should mean more than that. Patty's a prominent personality and a promising promoter. But she is not a president. If the girls' league votes for Patty tomorrow, it will be making a grave mistake. Thank you. And now for her summation, Patty Lane.
If you have a Kathy Lane for a friend, you don't need an enemy. <laughs> What's wrong with the little dancing in the corridors? Things are lively around here, and we're going to keep them that way. What we need is a president who knows our problems. If Kathy is elected president, our biggest problem will be our president. She turned, my own sweet brother, who adored me, into a Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Let's not turn her loose on strangers. <laughs> Keep her out of office. If she's elected, you'll be setting our school back 50 years. Thank you. And now for the summation of our third candidate, Susan Baxter. Vote for me. <laughs> The stewards have just finished tallying the votes. This has been the most closely contested election in the history of the school. The candidates put up a hard fight. In fact, one could have wished for a little less heat and a lot more light. Things were said during this campaign that could have been put under the heading of battle fever. Now that the election is over, I hope these things will be forgotten and all the bitterness put aside in the best tradition of American fair play. And now, let's see who the new president of the Girls' League is. I got here as quickly as I could. What's happened? Patty's running away from home. Well, how do you know? Come upstairs. There. Why would she do this? Kathy must have won the election and Patty couldn't face it. Where is Patty? I can't find her anywhere. I phoned you as soon as I saw this. I've heard of bad losers, but this is ridiculous. There's a lot of bitterness between them. Patty always felt that she's the more popular. It must have killed her to have Kathy show her up. Well, it's time Patty found out life is not one big popularity contest. Write it to her when she gets settled. <laughs> we better hurry with that suitcase. It's already. Hold it. How could you do this? I might have known you were mixed up in this. Young lady, you are not going anywhere. What are you talking about? You and Kathy. You are going to sit down woman to woman and settle your differences. Well, there's no point in that. We both... Oh, yes, there is. You both belong here. Of course we do. Then you'll stay? Sure, Papa. That's my girl. <laughs> oh, boy, you sure have an emotional family. <laughs> Hello. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> there, that's better. Better than what? Cool it. <laughs> now, Patty and Kathy, we were a very happy family before this election, and we are going to be a happy family again. Now, isn't that what you really want, both of you? Sure. Uh, we never Good. Been... Now, just because Kathy won the election, you can't... I didn't win. You won, and you're still going to run... I didn't win. You didn't? No. Kathy and I knocked each other out of the box. Susan Baxter won the dark horse. <laughs> <laughs> what about the suitcase? Yeah, what about it? Listen, I don't mean to be a nag, but we better get it down. That truck will be here any minute. Truck? The first thing Susan did as president was start a drive for the Salvation Army. We're contributing all our old clothes and things to it. You mean you had no intention of running of away? Of course not. Kathy and I buried the hatchet. In each other, but we buried it. <laughs> well, I, I told you it would be all right. <laughs> Don't you know you couldn't dynamite us out of here? <laughs> Where else would we find a family like this with color television? <laughs> Come on. I'd better get ready. Teddy's taking me to the mashed potato ball tonight. Oh, I'm so proud of him, I could burst. So am I. <laughs> I'm glad it's all over. Hi, group. Boy, have I got good news for you. Guess who got nominated for president of the fifth grade? Here 
Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike, they walk alike, they time, they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Like this? That's it. She's all go. Oh, we're going to give you two some real competition tonight in that dance contest. Ted, I'm not going to enter the contest. Why not? I'm not good enough. Of course you are. I'm sure you'll win. I should. It's my house. I'm counting on you tonight, Kathy. Well, got to go. Come on, Ted. See you tonight. And don't get too tired. Practice sitting out a few. That's more fun. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'll see you tonight, Kathy. Goodbye, Ted. Imagine you not knowing the hammer. If my father were a foreign correspondent and I traveled all over the world with him, I'd know every dance there was. Father and I went to the ballet quite often. I'll bet. I've never been in a dance contest before. I'm a bit nervous. It's just a bunch of kids coming over for some laughs. It's nothing to be nervous about. I wish I had your confidence. You're not afraid of anything. That's because there's nothing to be afraid of. It's all in your mind. Mom, can I tell her the bad news? Please? I'll do it. I just spoke to the doctor. I made a four o'clock appointment for you today. For what? For your flu shot. Boy, do they use a long needle. <laughs> <laughs> flu shot? Today? Today. You've been putting it off every week for a month. Now, you're not stalling any longer. Mom, I, I can't go today. I don't feel well. Oh, what's wrong this time? Same as last time. She's a coward. I'm not. <laughs> I have this terrible headache. Last week you had a stomach ache. The week before that you had a backache. Before that it was a stiff neck. That's what I mean. I'm a pretty sick kid. You're as healthy as a horse. I may be a healthy horse, but I'm a sick kid. <laughs> Besides, I hate flu shots. They hurt like the dickens. Don't they, Kathy? No. Who asked you? <laughs> Mom, I can't get a shot today. I'm giving a party here tonight. No shot, no party. You better get started. No, that needle must be a foot long. Out! I wish I could watch. <laughs> Shot. Shots don't hurt. Maybe they don't hurt you, but... Shots don't hurt you? Of course not. Kathy, I've got a great idea. I don't like it. You haven't heard it yet. All I want you to do is go to the doctor and get the shot in my place. <laughs> I mean, because we look alike, the doctor won't know the difference and he'll give me the shot thinking I'm you? Yeah. It's a wonderful idea. And it'll work, too. Except for one little thing. What? I won't do it. <laughs> How can you turn down a blood relative? I've already had my flu shot. And besides, my taking your shot isn't going to immunize you. You should take the shot. It will keep you healthy. I don't want to be healthy. I'm a sick kid and I want to stay that way. Daddy? <laughs> She's coming out, Natalie. Come on. Follow <laughs> me. Don't be such a coward. You're not afraid of anything because there's nothing to be afraid of. That's what you said. I lied. Kathy, I want you to go to the doctor with Patty and see that she gets her shot. 
All right, Aunt Natalie. Can I go, too? I'll help hold her. <laughs> Why don't we do it tomorrow? My horoscope says it's a bad day for flu shots. Come on, Patty. A coward dies a thousand deaths. A brave man only once. I'm going to my execution, and she quotes poetry. <laughs> Remember me! <laughs> you know, I'll bet Patty talks Kathy into taking her shot for her. Dr. Williams, please. This is Natalie Lane. Hello, Doctor. No, she's on her way. I just called to warn you. This time, she may try to pretend she's her cousin. Good. Oh, and Doctor, be gentle with her. Patty's a very sensitive child. He's not here. Let's go. No. I'll tell the doctor you're here. I'll be right back. You stay here. I'm too sick to see a doctor. You heard what your mother said. No shot, no party. Sit down. Pardon me. Oh, hello, Patty. You're right on time. I I'm not Patty. Oh, then you must be her cousin. That's right. I'm Kathy. I thought so. Uh, I'll bring Patty in now. No, that won't be necessary. Your mother called and warned me about you two. That was my aunt who called. Your mother became your aunt? When did she do that? When she married my father's brother. <laughs> I mean, uh, father and Uncle Martin look alike. And so do Patty and I. Uh, people mistake us, uh... <gasps> What did you do? <laughs> it's all over, Patty. Now you won't have to worry about getting the flu. Hello. I wasn't worried. I've already had my flu shot. Uh, it's the hospital doctor. They're ready for you. I'll be right there. Doctor. Patty, you're a very brave girl. We're all proud of you. <laughs> How do you feel? Fair. Are you going to tell your mother what happened? Of course I will. Sometime in the future. Are you going to get your shot? Of course I will. Sometime in the future. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll go tomorrow, I promise. Only, uh, in the meantime, let's not say anything to Mom. She's kind of, well, you know how old people are. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. Did you go to the doctor? Yes, ma'am. Did you get your flu shot? Yes, ma'am. How do you feel? Great. <laughs> you see, I'll bet it didn't even hurt. I can honestly say I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> Here, try this. Heat's great for swelling. Here's your dress, dear. I ironed it and said, why haven't you two started to get ready yet? Your guests will be arriving soon. Kathy, what's the matter with your arm? Nothing, Aunt Natalie. Well, then why have you got a hot water Mom, bottle? I have a confession to make. I didn't get that shot. Kathy did. What? It, it was an accident. I went in to tell the doctor that Patty was there. And he thought I was Patty. And before I knew it, ouch. Oh, you poor baby. I'm fine, really. No, you stay in bed. But I have to get dressed for the party. I'm afraid there's not going to be any party for you tonight. I'm going to go call Dr. Williams. Patty. I know how you feel, Kath. I'll tell you what. If you can't come down to the party, I won't either. Would you? Well, uh, sure. Uh, of course. If that's what you want me to do. Do you? No. You talk me out of it. <laughs> For your sake, I'll go down, but uh, I won't have a good time. You'd better call Ted and tell him. He was looking forward to the dance contest. Why don't we wait? Maybe the doctor will say it's all right. I just spoke to the doctor. He says you're having a mild reaction to the shot. It happens occasionally. It's nothing to worry about. You stay in bed tonight, and you'll be fine in the morning. I'm sure I'll be all right. You stay in bed, young lady. 
Oh, I know it's a disappointment, but there'll be other parties. I'll get you an ice pack. The doctor said to apply cold to the arm. So I'm not Ben Casey. I can't stand Ted up at the last minute. He'll never date me again. Never. I wish I could change places with you so that you could go to the party and I could... I can keep your date with Ted. What? He'll think it's you. You couldn't. Of course I could. You took my shot for me. The least I can do is date your boyfriend for you. <laughs> it's better than having him bring another girl. This way, we'll keep him in the family. What about your date with Richard? I'll keep that, too. You can't be both of us. When the boys come, there have to be two of us. You've got a point. Let me think. There are two boys coming over for two girls. And there's only one of you. Is there? Good evening, Ted, old chap. You're looking simply divine this evening. I don't talk like that. That's what you think. Oh, there you are, Ted, darling. <laughs> I don't call him darling. You will tonight. But how can you fool both of them? Leave it to me. Patty, promise me one thing. What? You can kiss your date, but not mine. Promise? Promise. <laughs> Gee, I hope I don't get confused. <laughs> Lovely, darling. You look like your mother did when she was your age. It brings back memories. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. You remember the first dance I ever took you to? Yes, it was at Jean Ann Dockstetter's house. That's right. You wore a new blue pinstriped suit. That's right. And you danced every dance with Jean Ann Dockstetter. That's wrong. I know, but you did it anyway. They were shaking the shimmy, and she had more to shake than I did. That's right. <laughs> you two aren't going to start reminiscing now, are you? I thought you liked to hear about the Stone Age. I do. Only my guests will be arriving any second. All right, darling, the Flintstones are leaving. Ross is sleeping out tonight, and Mrs. Crown is coming in to supervise the party. Please don't give her a hard time. We won't. Have fun. We will. Come on, Ma. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> jumpy about me jumpy i guess it's just the tension of being a hostess well, where's kathy who your cousin kathy oh my cousin kathy what's the matter with you nothing she's in the kitchen helping margaret with the with the sandwich is everyone here pat now they are excuse me a minute. <laughs> making sandwiches. Oh, here she is. Hello, Kathy. Good evening, Ted. Hello, Kathy. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Crow. I thought you'd never get here. Well, I had to run an errand for my parents. We oh. haven't seen you all evening, Kathy. I understand you've been helping in the kitchen. Yes, ma'am. Um, would you excuse me? Would you care to dance? Sure. She's a lovely girl. Yeah. I wonder where Patty is. Hey, Pete, Pete, have you seen Patty? Nope. I'll give you Henrietta. I wonder where she went. She's just here. There's a bunch in the den. Maybe she's there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Kathy? Kathy? Oh, yes, Ted. I'm really looking forward to the dance contest. Are you? Well, are you? Oh, certainly. Only, um, Patty and Richard are so good, I don't think we stand a chance. Oh, don't sell yourself short. You're much more graceful than Patty. I mean, uh, Patty is a natural born dancer. Well, she could use some of your modesty. <laughs> Ow! Oh, I'm so sorry. That's 
That's all right. What's the matter? I'm suddenly terribly thirsty. Would you mind getting me a drink? Well, all right. I'll be right back. <laughs> sort of be together for a little while? I think it might be a good idea if we mingled. You go that way, and I'll go this way, and we'll meet... Well, let's both go this way, then. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to tell you how pretty you look tonight. Thank you. Well, you're the prettiest girl at the party. Oh, I think Patty's prettier. Are you kidding? She doesn't hold a candle to you. Who says so? Besides, you have a better personality. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean by that? Well, Patty's a nut. I mean, she's always doing crazy things. She is not. As far as I'm concerned, Patty's the smartest, prettiest, and most intelligent girl I know. Well, that's just because you're loyal to her. You bet. <laughs> you bet I am. Oh, she's a clod. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I don't want to talk about Patty. Let's talk about us. Uh, let's not get... <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me. Uh... Richard, I, I wasn't kissing him. He was kissing me. Well, you don't have to explain to me, Kathy. You're not my girl. Patty is. Do me a favor, will you? And get Patty out of the powder room. I heard her shiny noses, but this is ridiculous. Come on, dance. Yes, Richard. Certainly, Richard. Excuse me. Well, wait a minute. I want to dance, too. Uh, all right. I promise you the next dance. I'll be right back. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, Kathy, I'm afraid you misunderstood my question about the Moors. What I wanted to know was, do the Moors have pee? Yes, they have pee. They have Pete and Sandy and Angus. They're a big family. <laughs> Me. 
about time. I might as well have stayed home. I'm sorry. I got to talking to some of the girls, the boys and girls. We're now going to have the dance contest. <laughs> Prizes will be awarded to the boy and girl who, in the opinion of the judge, me, gives the best interpretation of the hammer. <laughs> Let's go. Where? In a contest. I can't. What are you afraid of? Who can beat us? Come on. You're sure hard to keep track of. Good. I mean, I wouldn't want to be underfoot all the time. Well, let's go. What are you doing? Well, we almost missed the dance contest. Uh, I can't do the contest with you. You just did. Don't worry, we're going to win. <laughs> I guess I ought to know my girlfriend. Tell him who you are. I'm Patsy. <laughs> I mean, I'm Caddy. Stop clowning around. Come on, I want to talk to you. Let go of my date. She's my date. She's mine. Wait a minute, Philip. Wait a minute. I can explain. It's all very simple. Well, not really simple. You see, I went to get a flu shot, and Kathy got it instead, and she got sick, and... I'm not feeling too good myself. No, wait a minute. Hey, wait, 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 wait. No, wait a minute. And then both boys started dragging me off. It must have been a terrible experience. Well, it was. And when we got outside, they started swinging at each other. I had to break it up. Finally, I explained, but... I'll get it. Hello. Hello, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hey, Patty told me you were sick last night. How do you feel now? Oh, I'm much better, thank you. Where's Patty? She's inside. Hi, Patty. Hi, Richard. Hello, Ted. I'm sorry about last night. We're the ones that are sorry. Yeah, we didn't mean to start a fight and... That's all right. 
At least it served one purpose. Now you can tell us apart. I'm the natural born dancer. Well, the shiner. <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. 